Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Toro in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon Raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon Raw tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to get a better performance out of your CPU for your DAWs. Now, this will apply to all DAWs because the language is pretty much the same. So, this applies for if you're using Ableton, Logic, Studio One, Pro Tools specifically, which I will be showing you here. You can follow along. Let's get right to it. So, first thing that I'm going to show you is uh, a little window that I love. If you click window and you click system usage, this little thing will pop up right here. And what this will do is this will give you a real time, quote unquote, uh, uh, perspective of what your CPU processing power or what the processor is doing, how much uh, the load is on it, uh, how little of it is. It'll give you a rough idea of how much power you're actually using. So this is really powerful to track and see what's causing spikes. When you see this total right here, when it hits 100, that's when your DAW usually stops and crashes, or that's when you get clicks and pops and things of that nature. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out the problem, go over to your system usage window and you can figure out what is really happening. Okay, so now that I'm looking at my system usage, I'm gonna tell you something uh, that a lot of people may not know about in Pro Tools specifically. Uh, there's this little thing, Setup Playback Engine, which is in all of our playback engines, EDAWs. This button that says Dynamic Plugin Processing. Now, what is Dynamic Plugin Processing? Now, all it is is saying that, hey, when there's actual audio on the track, then use the processing power up for those plugins that are on that given track. Now, when there is no audio on the track, the plugin power that would have been used for those plugins will not be used. So you're basically sharing power and divvying it up a lot better. So it makes it a, a more uh, 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 efficient way of using your processing power. Now, if you click dynamic plugin processing off, what would happen is the power for all those plugins will be on all the time at all times. So this will help you to mitigate those circumstances in your CPU power. Now, I'm gonna show you something that a lot of people may not know. Uh, this is step one, this is showing you the dynamic plugin processing. Now, I'm gonna play this right here. You see all these blank audio tracks that I created? All of these blank audio tracks, sure there's no audio, but this is how dynamic plugin processing works. Watch this play. Look at the CPU usage window and watch this. Spikes. You see that? As soon as those audio blocks or those blocks of audio came onto the track, the CPU power kicked on. That's dynamic plugin processing. So the only time that it uses the processing power of the plugins on those given tracks is when it actually sees audio. Super powerful. I think that's something that would probably change the way you use Pro Tools for the most part or your other DAWs. Next thing that I'll show you guys, we'll go right back to Playback Engine, is buffer size. So I know a lot of you, all of us have seen this, it's buffer size. Long story short, the buffer size just tells you or acts as how long does it take before I uh, basically play back audio. Uh, when it comes to the buffer size, there's two of them that you should be using. One for me is 128 and the other is 512 samples, so it's samples. So if I click, you see the samples right here. So if you use 128 for your samples, you'll notice that you have less latency. This is great for recording, because now when the artist sings or raps into the microphone, they will notice a, a less delay in their headphones as far as hearing themselves. Now, if you drop this bad boy down to 512, you'll notice that in the headphones, when they're recording, they'll have latency. When they sing, they'll be hearing more like a doubling of themselves. Now, there's a reason why I use both. I use 128 off the strength of that's better for recording, and I use 512 because that's better for mixing. So remember that 128 samples is great for recording, and 512 samples is great for mixing. So the reason why is because when you're mixing, obviously it's okay if there's latency. As long as you're playback and you're hearing everything, you're good. But when it comes to recording, you don't wanna hear a latency issue because that destroys your performance or messes with you a lot. Even for my producers that have keyboards and things of that nature, when you hit that key, don't you want it to instantaneously hear that kick come through? This comes with your sample size. The lower your sample buffer rate, the faster uh, things react as far as when you input signal. So it's great to use 512 for mixing, 128 for recording. Just make sure you keep that in mind. Okay, another thing I'm gonna to suggest to you guys is to always close your programs. Uh, if you're using Windows, Control-Alt-Delete, close all your programs. And if you're using Mac, uh, you should always use Command-Alt-Escape 
and you'll get this window and you should close any program that you're not using to also give you more room for your CPU, okay? Next thing I'm gonna show you guys is an SSD. An SSD hard drive is so, so important when it comes to recording or doing any kind of work on your PC or a Mac. Now, what is an SSD drive compared to your traditional external hard drive? All it is is an SSD drive has the capability of read, reading and writing data much more faster and efficiently than your actual traditional hard drive. Now, how does this make sense to you? Think about it. When you play back audio, and let's take a look at this, Look at all of these audio signals that we have here that have to play back simultaneously when you press play. Now, this information has to be read from your actual hard drive, but if you have an SSD, it reads it way faster uh, and writes it way faster than your traditional. Traditional hard drives can pretty much write, read and write up to 120 megabytes a second, as opposed to an SSD that can do up to 500 megabytes per second, even more. So think about it. It can read and write 500 megs in a second compared to your traditional drive that can read up to 120 megabytes per second. That's almost five times faster. So you're gonna get less of those issues when it comes to playing back all of those audio files all at once because it can read and process that information a lot faster. So it's very important. An SSD hard drive is so important. I was always taught anyway, if it's not in two places, it doesn't exist. Get hard drives, specifically an SSD to work off of, and then get another hard drive just to store it. Trust me, it'll save your life. Trust me, okay? Okay. Next thing I'm gonna tell you about is um, sample rates. So when it comes to sample rate, this is a very quick thing that I'm gonna show you. When it comes to sample rates, using lower sample rates will have less processing load on your computer. So if you're using a uh, sample rate of 192 kilohertz, you throw one plug in on that thing and your computer isn't the most uh, strongest thing in the world, it's not gonna play. So when it comes to uh, deciding what sample rate to use, you also have to take into account how powerful your piece, your computer is. So play around with this. Just know that if you have a lower sample rate, like 44.1, that that will basically have less load on your computer because it doesn't use so much processing power. For me personally, I like to use 48. Uh, I'm a big fan of how 48 sounds. I won't get too deep into that, but just know that I personally like to use 48 kilohertz. It's great on the PC as far as balance with performance and sound quality. So I like to use 44.1 kilohertz for my sample rate, just to give you an idea. Okay, so I really hope that that was helpful. That was just a rough idea of how to basically optimize your Pro Tools or DAW uh, uh, audio workstation when it comes to recording and mixing. Now granted, there's a lot of other things you could do as far as using uh, plugins that use less processing power. Uh, there are plugins that are literally known for basically being little to no processing power. Some plugins are gonna be heavier than others when it comes to power, so that's something to take into account. When you use limiters and things like that, those things usually take a lot of processing power from the algorithms that they have. That's something to keep in mind. So make sure that you're always watching out for those things that I showed you, but for the most part, for a basic understanding of how to optimize your systems, this is a great way to start. I'm using a 2015 MacBook Pro uh, for my sessions. As you can see, you can look right here, I have a ton of plugins on and it works just fine because I use those techniques in order to optimize my system. So I hope that was helpful. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram. Also, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, hit me at helpmedevon at gmail.com. If you want templates like mine right here, you can go to helpmedevon.info to get one for yourself. We have templates in Pro Tools, Ableton, uh, FL Studio, and, uh, Pro and Logic, of course. And, um, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Let me know what you want to see next. Until next time, you guys.